Hey guys, Howard here with Cross-Eyed Mary from Jethro Tull, of course, from the Aqualung album. It's the second cut on the album and the uh, third addition, I think, to the uh, electric stuff I've been doing, okay? So let's dive right into it. The verse is based on four power chords with a bluesy little pentatonic lick at the end. And so we start with an E5 or an E power chord. You can do that with all down strokes or alternate strokes, whichever you prefer. I may have done it both ways in the performance, but you want to mute it tight afterwards, okay? Then we move to an F power chord. Same thing, G, and then D. That cool little riff at the end, okay? So the riff played nice and slow. You can see it on the tab is. Give it a slight little maybe quarter tone bend, if even that, on that last note. And we repeat all of that. is your verse minus the uh just keeping time for you there okay so then we get into the choruses and the choruses are played like this <laughs> Okay, so let's go over that chorus nice and slow. It's another great riff, kind of similar, just a pentatonic bluesy thing. And that's an A, and you'll play it four times, okay? But let's talk about the picking just a little bit. You can pick it however suits you, of course, but I'll share with you how I do it. Down, down, up to begin with. And then it's straight alternate picking all the way to that G power chord where I attack it with an upstroke. So it's straight alternate picking after that first down, and then it's down, up, down, up, down, up. Finally landing a downstroke at that second G chord. times and then we move it up a half step to a B flat and uh, what we're doing here is the exact same riff everything's exactly the same just a half step higher but we only play it three times <laughs> a C power chord. For this, I'm playing root, fifth, and octave, four down strokes, and then a D power chord to a C power chord and back. And that's a B power chord to an A and back. You can see it all on the tab, of course, but just kind of explaining it a little bit. So we have from that C... And as a note on that, once in a while you hear the piano kind of starting a little bit early, so it kind of sounds like this. I think you can hear the difference. So if you want to do that, feel free, but for the most part, the guitar kind of comes in on that second stroke. Kind of cool like that, right? You head right back to the verse and you do everything again, right? Now for the solo section, they use that riff. But without the power chord, and they leave one of the 16th notes out. So they play. and we'll talk about 
out the notes added on that verse. So once again, it's the same riff, but without that. It's just. So a bit of uh, advice on that one as far as the picking, because that second 16th note is missing, or I should say the first 16th note is missing, uh, you want to approach it with a downstroke to start with and then go into an upstroke and follow through with alternate picking. That's going to get you inside that riff the best way. And just like before, raise the whole thing up a half step to B flat. back into the verse, but we've got some cool little riffs in between those power chords. talk about that okay the chords are exactly the same so I'll just play it for you and nice and slow maybe a little subtle muting on those licks in between stuff and then it's right back to the uh, chorus once again outro. So we're going to have a string of chords and I like to play the full chords but you can uh, minimize them to just power chords if you want to and there's one little cool lick that Martin Barr plays in there that I'll cover. So we've got an E minor, standard E minor chord however you choose to play it. Same rhythm right bam 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 and then mute it really tight. And then we've got a C chord, a bar chord, a third fret on the A string, and then barring the D, the G, and the B string with your uh, third finger, your ring finger, and we'll have a C chord. Then we move that up a whole step for D sus4, so we add our pinky to the eighth fret on the B string. And that's where Martin plays this cool little lick. Okay, so how that's played is, it's all on the B string, I'm on the 10th fret and I pull off to the 8th and then slide very quickly to the 6th fret. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, pull on that 7th one, okay? So you want to make that as staccato as possible. So I'm kind of choking them off with my pick like that, okay? So the lick really slow is... So from that E minor, then we have Okay, and then we move to an E minor bar chord at the 7th fret, so it's 7 on the A string, 9 on the D and the G, just like a regular power chord, and then of course the 8th fret on the B string. Okay, and we're going to go back and forth between that and an F chord, just like these chords we had here, and back to the E minor again, but twice as fast, less space in between. Like so, okay? And then we're gonna move through some other chords with that exact same pacing, okay? We're gonna move like this. All 
the way down to B flat. C, D, and then E minor. And if you want, you can definitely play that E as just a power chord, okay? So that whole ending, a little bit slower, is like this. So there you go with Cross-Eyed Mary from Jethro Tull, one of my favorite Tull tunes, actually. I've got quite a few, but this is definitely one of them. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, all the best to everyone. Uh, peace to everyone, and uh, we'll see you guys real soon.